In today's video, we're gonna do the math on a side-by-side -side comparison of TSP compared to Roth TSP. The numbers would be the same if we were talking about traditional IRA versus Roth IRA. I think there are some assumptions that are being made and the math just doesn't support it. So let's dive into the numbers. Hey, my name is Mel Stubbs. I'm here on behalf of Retirement Benefits Institute, talking to federal employees about their retirement system and planning for retirement in a better way. Today, we're talking about traditional compared to raw. And have you seen those uh, things on the internet where there's like, there's two lines and they ask you which one's longer? It's kind of an optical game where there's clearly one line is just way longer, but then you line them up, they're the same size, but you, you know one of them had to be longer. Or there's ones where it's like there's two circles and one circle looks way bigger. But when you line them up, they're exactly the same. I think that applies to traditional versus raw. There's some assumptions that are being made. Some people just naturally think one of these has to be better. But when you do the math, they're the same. So let's go over some of those today. So what we're going to do, we are going to compare two options. They're going to be apples to apples comparison. We're going to be putting $10,000 a year into the traditional, and we're going to be putting an equivalent amount into the Roth. Now, this is going to be a 10-year thing that we're going to look at. So we're going to do it for 10 straight years, and then let's see what happens. There's a couple of assumptions that we're going with. Number one, the assumed tax rate is going to be 22%. So the whole time, year one, two, three, all the way to 10, it's, we're just assuming the tax rate is always going to be 22%. For all of you that live in Texas, Florida, Tennessee, and maybe some other states that don't have a income tax, then maybe this is you. You're in the 22% bracket. That's what we're gonna be using. Another assumption we're making is 10%. It's going to earn 10%. The C fund is, a 10 year average is about 10%. So we are assuming the tax rate, we are assuming a growth rate. Another thing we're doing for simplification is we're putting the money in on January 1st. It's gonna have the whole year to grow. And then we're going to put another money in January 1st. So I know that's not how TSP works, but I'm trying to simplify the math so you can just see what's different about it. So if you look here, let's zoom in on just the traditional. You'll see in year one, we're going to put $10,000 in. It's going to grow 10%. And now at the end of the year, you have $11,000. Okay, year two, you put 10,000 in. Now you've got 21,000 in there. It's going to grow 10% you're up to 23,100 and so on and so forth. You'll see down at the bottom here, at the end of 10 years, your ending balance is $175,312. But if you look down there, we haven't applied taxes to it yet because everything is growing before taxes. So when we apply the 22% rate to it, your after tax balance is 136,743. You see you've paid 38,000 in taxes, uh, your after-tax balance is 136. Now, another assumption we have here is the 22% bracket is that's what it's going to be forevermore. So even though you took all of it out, let's say in that one year, we're saying the after-tax portion of the balance, 136, the taxable portion is the 38,000. So that's how the traditional looks. Let's look over at the Roth side. So the same things we're assuming, you are 22% tax bracket. Okay, we're assuming that. We're assuming it grows at 10%. The C fund grows in the traditional the same way that it grows in the Roth. So the earnings would be the same. Now, the one difference you'll see here is the contribution. We're not putting 10,000 in, we're putting 7,800. Why is that? You have your 10,000, you're gonna do Roth. So you gotta pay taxes first. So 22% would be 2,200. So now you've got 7,800 left over after taxes to put into the Roth. So don't let that difference in number mess you up. That is the same number. You're starting with 10,000, 10,000 goes to traditional. You're starting with 10,000, 10,000 doesn't go to Roth because you gotta pay taxes to get it in there. So a $7,800 contribution is a similar apples to apples comparison. So the same thing, you put the money in January 1st, it grows 10%, you have an ending balance. You put another contribution in, now the total grows 10%, you have another ending balance so on and so forth. You get down to the bottom here and you'll see at the end of 10 years, you have a balance of 136,743. Now that looks, you know, if you remember, that's less than what the, the traditional balance was. Well, that makes sense. But your ending balance of 136 
Remember, that's also the after-tax balance of 136. So if we do a comparison, let's put them side by side. The ending balance of the traditional was 175. The ending balance of the Roth was 136. But when you apply the tax rate to it, you'll see the after-tax balance for both traditional and Roth, 136,743. So after taxes, the balance is exactly the same. Now, why is that? Whether you tax the seed, that'd be Roth, or you tax the harvest, that would be traditional, the after-tax balance is the same. Why would that be? Well, if you look here, because the tax rate is the same. If the tax rate is exactly the same, it doesn't matter if you tax the seed or you tax the harvest. Mathematically, it works out the same. Okay, here are some of the comments that we get from people. Traditional lets me contribute more since it's before tax. So that means my balance will be bigger. That must be better. I know it seems that, but it's not. If you look back, Yes, your balance, what they're saying, my balance is 175. But remember, the traditional balance, the 175, that is not your balance. Your balance is the portion after taxes. The after tax portion is exactly the same if the tax rate remains the same. Okay, here's another comment that we get. Since the balance is bigger in traditional, that means there is more there to grow over time. That's going to be better for me. Well, now we're getting back to the, the two circles and one sure does seem bigger, but it's not. If you look at the math, you'll see at the bottom here that after-tax balance is the same. They're both 136,000. But look, on the Roth side, you only paid 22,000 in total taxes. Well, where does that number come from? Well, remember $2,200 a year came out for taxes for 10 straight years, so you paid 22,000. On the traditional side, you'll see the total taxes paid is $38,000. So even though your take-home balance is the same, you actually pay more dollar for dollar for taxes in traditional. Well, why does that work? Well, remember, in Roth, you took the $2,200 out and you gave, you gave it to the government, and then you only invested your money. But in the traditional, you took the full $10,000 and invested it. So you invested the $7,800 that was kind of your portion, but you also invested the $2,200 a month that is set aside for the government. So over the 10 years, the government's portion, the tax portion, it grew by 10%. So at the end of the time, when you're giving the government 38,000, it's because the government earned interest on their portion of your balance, the tax portion. So that's why the balance seems bigger, but it seems bigger because the taxes are growing as well. So summarizing that, if the tax rate's the same, it doesn't matter what you do. Roth or traditional, the, the math works out the same. Even though it doesn't seem like it would, it does. If the tax rate's the same, the math works out, it doesn't matter which one you do. Now let's look when the tax rates don't remain the same. So if you look here in this one, everything is the same. You're still putting 10,000 in, it's still growing 10%. The first 10 years, the tax rate is at 22%. All of that's the same from before. You've got the $175,000 uh, balance on the traditional side. You've got $136,000 ending balance on the Roth side. But here's where the difference is. If you look in year 11, we've got taxes go up to 28%. Okay, this is going to be different. So then let's look. What's different about it? You still got the $175,000 balance on the traditional side. You still got the 136 dollars on the Roth side. But what's different is you have to pay taxes now at a higher rate. So on the traditional side, you've got the $175,000 balance, but now at 28% taxes, you've got to pay 49,000 in taxes. That's more than it was before. Now that you pay 49,000 in taxes, you can see your after-tax balance is 126,000. Well, 126,000 is not the same as on the Roth side, because on the Roth side, you still have the 136,000. So you can see here, if you tax the seed raw at one rate, and then you tax the harvest at a higher rate, that's bad. So this shows you if tax rates change for the worse, this shows you the math why Roth is better, okay? Taxes remain the same, they're the same. If taxes go up, Roth is better. 
I don't have an example to show you, but if taxes go down, you can see traditional would be better. So here are some comments that we get about Roth. When you do Roth, it messes up your take home pay. Okay, so let's look at that. Remember, we did an apples to apples comparison. So we said if you're doing $10,000 to traditional, the apples to apples comparison would be doing 7,800 to Roth. That way it does not mess up your take home pay. Now, if you do 10,000 to traditional and you also do a full 10,000 all the way into Roth, that will change your take home pay. But on a positive side, it lets you almost invest more money on the Roth side because since none of it's going to taxes, you actually get to max out and put all of the investment all in an account that's all yours. On the traditional side, when you max it out, yes, that's all you can put in there, but a chunk of it is actually the government's that you're holding for. So on the Roth side, if you invest as much as you can, you actually get to put more in. But if you do that, it would change your take home pay. In the example we're showing you here, this is an apples to apples where $10,000 of traditional equals 7,800 of Roth. So this would have the same take home pay for you. Here's another comment I get. Uh, well, if I do Roth now, I have to wait five years before I can touch any of the money. Well, that's just not exactly how the rules work. Here's how the rules work. You have to wait five years or be the age 59 and a half, whichever one comes later, to touch the growth of the money. The key word there is to touch the growth. You can touch your contribution at any time. You can touch your conversion at any time. So if you convert a chunk of money over to Roth, you can touch that money anytime. You just can't touch the growth for five years or the age of 59 and a half, whichever one comes later. Being able to touch any of the money, that, that's just not accurate. Here's a comment we get a lot. I'm getting ready to retire. I think it's too late for me to do Roth. So the example we showed you was a 10 year example. And you can see after 10 years, there was a difference. Many people, if you're retired, getting ready to retire, people live 35, 40 years in retirement sometimes. That's plenty of time for this tax planning to work. It showed up that it worked in just a 10 year time frame. So even if you're getting ready to retire, even if you've already been retired, it still can work for you. In the example we're showing, we're talking about doing a $10,000 a year contribution. Well, once you've retired, most people can't contribute anymore. They're not working, so they can't do a contribution to TSP. Many of them aren't working and have enough income. They can't contribute to a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Here's the thing. You can do conversions. So if you pay a higher number, a higher tax rate later than you would pay now, that would mean Roth is better. Well, here's some of the other things that we hear. Well, my income is going to be higher or lower or whatever at retirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What tax rate do you think you're going to pay? Well, I may lose some deductions and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What tax rate do you think you're going to pay? Well, now that we have the standard deduction, that's kind of messing me up because I used to do the itemized, now it's standard. I get you. What do you think the tax rate's going to be? That's the main question. You want to pay it at the lower rate. We've shown you the math that if the rate is exactly the same, it doesn't matter. So we don't have to be perfect in our guessing for taxes. We just need to know the direction. Do you think they're going to go up or do you think they're going to go down? It doesn't matter how much they go up. It is beneficial for you to do raw if they go up at all. If taxes go down, it is beneficial for you to do traditional. You need to do the research and study and figure this stuff out. If you don't want to do that, then you need to work with somebody that understands your benefits and understands these things. Jump on over to Retirement Benefits Institute's website at retireinstitute.com. Talk with somebody that understands your benefits and understands these tax planning ideas and how they can pay off for you in your future planning. My name is Mel Stubbs. I will talk to you next time.